This is a practical philosophy for all fields of research. It's presented at uh, ECRM 20 and it's in the proceedings but it's also on the internet. I'll give you that URL at the end too. This expands on part of a book that I've just published, Foundations and Practice of Research, Adventures with Doyavir's Philosophy. Doyavir's philosophy is little known, but I've spent the last 25 years investigating it in relation to research, especially in information systems and sustainability and perhaps business. It's an unusual philosophy and comes at things from a new angle. So in this book there is a lot of things that are new approaches in, uh, to research, including the idea that we can address all kinds of research in all kinds of fields. That is mentioned in the book and there's a table of fields against aspects. This talk expands on that. What are aspects? Aspects are Doyavir's idea of the diversity and coherence of reality. Uh, social reality, societal reality, individual reality, physical reality, you name it, it's all there. Aspects, you see, are spheres of meaning, ways in which things can be meaningful, or processes, or situations. And because they are all meaningful, they are also good and imply law. And each aspect has a different set of laws. So, for example, the physical aspect, such as the law of gravity, that's a determinative law. Whereas the social aspect has the laws of social interaction, which are non-determinative. The biotic aspect has its own laws to do with life. The quantitative is the laws of mathematics, and so on and so forth. We're talking about deep law here, not... Uh, laws of a, of a land or rules. Each aspect has a number, defines a number of things and their relationships and also processes and functioning and various other things. But for, for example, the quantitative aspect is what is but what makes amounts or quantities meaningful and their relationships which, for example, are ratios. There are also prime numbers and all sorts of other things. Each aspect defines or enables a different type of thing to be meaningful. The spatial aspect, for example, is to do with areas and overlaps. Kinematic is movement, physical is energy and materials and so on. The biotic aspect is to do with life, for, so organisms, progeny, health, ecosystems, the psychical or sensory aspect is to do with sensing, feeling, and so on. The analytic aspect is to do with distinction, by which we distinguish concepts, we make categories, we have logic, and non-contradiction. The formative aspect is the aspect of making, of shaping, of construction, of achieving, of planning, of technology and history, and so on, human history. The lingual aspect is to do with symbolic signification or, or expression. The social aspect is relationships, but also organizations. The economic aspect is to do with resources, limited resources, frugality, cost, conservation, also uh, money and price and so on. The aesthetic aspect is to do with harmony as in an orchestra, fun, beauty and so on, and uh, enjoyment. The juridical aspect is to do with due or appropriateness, justice. It's to do with the states it's, and politics. The ethical aspect is not right or wrong, it's to do with self-giving love versus selfishness, attitudes if you like, and the pistic aspect from the Greek word pistis meaning faith, vision, commitment, is to do with belief or commitment and things like religions. Now each of these aspects, because they 
define or make possible different types of things are the core interest of different fields or different disciplines. So for example the quantitative aspect is of interest to arithmetic and algebra and various other mathematical fields like statistics. The spatial aspect is of interest to geometry and geography, the kinematic aspect to mechanics. Physical aspect is to do with, uh, of interest to physics and chemistry, materials. Biology studies the biotic aspect, psychology, at least behavioral psychology, the psychical aspect, cognitive psychology and analysis are to do with the analytic aspect. The formative aspect is that our design sciences or engineering and technology. Then you've got linguistics, you've got sociology, you've got economics, you've got aesthetics, you've got law and politics, you've got ethics, and you've got theology interested in the pistic aspect and some anthropology as that as well. What people believe, what makes them tick. So you've got what we can do with aspects is separate out the different fields and see how they all fit into a bigger picture because the aspects are the coherence of reality in all its diversity and each field studies a different aspect. You can group them if you like so for example you've got the mathematical sciences are interested in the first three aspects, the natural sciences in the next, then the cognitive or individual sciences uh, in the next three and the social sciences in the next three and the societal sciences. Those groupings are not from Doivir, they're just conveniences that I find useful. But what we find is that it gives a holistic view across all fields because an aspect can define a number of different things. It defines what a field studies as we've seen in the in the one of the previous screens. It also defines which research methods are appropriate. So for example the physical aspect we would do experiments and we'd also use mathematics but we do experiments whereas in the social aspect we use interviews. Now if you try to use the physical aspect I, methods of experimentation in the social aspect you don't get very good results and possibly that's the problem of early positivist social science that it was trying to use some of the methods of earlier aspects. If you used interviews in the physical sciences you might get a sociology of physics or chemistry but you wouldn't get good physical findings. Each aspect has its own research methods. Each aspect ha relates to other aspects internally, inherently. So that, for example, the <coughs> lingual aspect depends on the formative and the analytic and the various others for its proper functioning. Think of a sentence. We, we make a sentence, we say something. Well, we've already and at the same time separate it out, distinguish the concepts that we want to convey and we've structured it somehow. Structure it differently, you, you get a different meaning. <coughs> but the lingual aspect also depends on later aspects for the fulfilling of its meaning, full meaning. Imagine there was no social aspect, no social functioning in the world, only lingual, we write things down, but we write them for ourselves. They are not understood by other people. Notes to ourselves, that's all it is. But when it serves the social aspect, it opens up, it flowers, it becomes much richer. Conversation, poetry, and all these sort of things. Poetry, of course, is the, is the uh, aesthetic aspect. So the fields that focus on a given aspect can we can see how they relate to other fields that focus on other aspects earlier and later and we don't have to demean them for example i i work in the information systems field <coughs> nearly 20 years ago there was a uh, 
article in the Harvard Business Review by somebody Carr entitled IT Doesn't Matter. And he argued that <clears throat> early on information technology did help businesses and differentiated them in terms of profits, but now that's not the case. Everyone's got IT. It's a bit like street lights and drains. Necessary but boring. Now he was thinking only from the economic aspect and actually a very narrow version of the economic aspect, only profits. The lingual aspect has a lot more to it than just serving profits. So for example, social media, is that important in business? So we can, be we can begin to see why each field is important. I'll come back to that in a minute, but first I want to have a look at <coughs> discourses in a field. In every field <coughs> there are subfields, there are paradigms, there are different thinkers arguing different things, interested in different things. So for example fields, subfields of the lingual aspect have been studied by a number of different thinkers throughout time and I include information systems and knowledge representation in there. Traditionally there are silos. Each person has followers, there's a discourse around each person and they talk among themselves but they very seldom talk to those in other discourses. Skinner uh, and Morrison very seldom talk to Derrida for example. Each, each thinker, each thinker has an interest in the lingual aspect but in another aspect. So for example Frege was interested in what logical symbols mean and how they come to mean something. So he's interested in the analytic aspect of logic but the lingual aspect too. Now all these thinkers are interested in the lingual aspect plus something else. Chomsky was interested in the psychical, so were Morris and Skinner. <clears throat> and if you have a look over all of them together, you'll see that a lot of the aspects are covered. The lingual plus analytic, psychical, biotic, formative, social, juridical, aesthetic, ethical. What this allows us to do is to see that each thinker is carving out for themselves the lingual aspect related to some other aspect in a certain way. And so we don't need to support one thinker rather than others. We can see them all as contributing to the overall picture and we can see which are missing. Uh, for example, there's nothing, there's no lingual plus economic there. And no lingual pl plus pistic. So, what we find is that each aspect defines what a field studies, what it's interested in, defines its research methods, defines its relationship with other fields, defines its discourses. It also, I think, defines its usefulness or its identity. The information systems field has had for 20 years lots of discussion about are we a real discipline, are we a real field, what, it, what is our identity, how do, how do we separate ourselves out and my suggestion from a paper I wrote in uh, uh, well nearly 10 years ago was that <coughs> we focus on the lingual aspect with a bit of formative and social there had been a t tendency for the information systems field to see it itself as socio-technical, but Alan Lee said, no, there's something in between. And now we can see from Doyavid what is in between. There's the social, and the technical, and there's a lingual in between, and that's the center. So information systems does concern itself with the formative or technical, does concern itself with the, with the social, and that's its dignity. Its destiny is where it's going, where it's headed. And again, 
it is going to open up the lingual aspect in relation to some certain others. And its responsibility is to open up this well. That's its identity. So, using Doyerveard in all fields of research helps in a number of ways. In my proceedings paper, there are seven. Here's four that we've covered in, in this talk. We've each field, well, we can critique its claims. I've already critiqued Carr's claims that IT doesn't matter. <coughs> That's a kind of reductionism. Another is evolutionist biology, which claims to be able to explain psychology, sociology, even religion. And it might do in a thin way, but does it really capture the richness? Does it really explain the richness of social activity or the richness of religion or art or whatever it is? No, it doesn't, because they are from different aspects that the biotic aspect knows nothing about. So we can use aspects to critique as a basis of critique. We can use aspects to reveal the value of ideas and where they fit. So, for example, um, the various discourses, various ideas that come up, we can say, hey, that's of a certain aspect. This is an, of another aspect. Both important. We can separate out individual concepts. My research students have found that very useful in aspectual analysis. We can relate discourses to each other. And for the rest of the paper, see the rest of the rest for uh, to do with mixed methods, to more on interfield relationships, and fostering mutual understanding. Here, the paper is not just in the proceedings, it's also on the internet. doi.info slash papers slash ecrm20 hyphen field slash dot html. You'll see this in a minute. But first, for fuller discussion, see the book. It's a fuller discussion of the background and the context of this talk and this paper. So here's the paper uh, again, if you want to take it down. Thank you very much. <laughs>